Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. A few prayer, well you can see the prayer list today, it's rather long, so make sure we keep all these folks in our prayers this week, uh, especially for uh, the Beck family at the passing of Ethel, and of course continue to keep the Alton family in your prayers uh, at the passing of Jerry, so it's been a tough couple weeks. Also, uh, one good thing, uh, Christina Lear, Diane Lear's da daughter-in-law, she's married to uh, Ethan, was discharged from the hospital, so that's a good thing. She doing well, Diane? Um, I'll find out more today, but she's um, certainly doing much better. So I'm going to try to continue to find out what the, what's going on. We still really don't know. Well, that's a praise. But though. it's great that she's home. Great Thank that she's home. Anybody have anything else for the good of the congregation this morning? All right, we gather in the name of the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Let us prepare our hearts and minds for worship as we listen to the prelude. note here from the Tomans. They write, May God bless the families of Jerry Altman and Ethel Beck. May our many prayers and thoughts help you in this difficult time. And that's from the Tomans. And they wrote this, Thanks to all of you for your thoughts and prayers and thoughts <coughs> for our son and family during this stressful time. We love you all. Michael is doing very well. You know, this was a tough week for many folks out there today, and it's sort of sometimes hard to set that all aside and, and focus on worship, but we're going to try. We're going to try to set, not to set it aside, but worship in spite of what's transpired. Worship because of what's transpired. Worship God. Uh, and thankfully, the two that passed were people of faith. What do people that don't have faith, what do they do in these difficult times? 
What do they cling to? You ever think about that? Whenever I'm at a funeral or <clears throat> hear of someone passing, I, and especially if I realize they didn't have faith or there was no evidence of it, I ask myself, what do they do in these difficult times? So we can be thankful that both these uh, saints are with the Lord, right? Amen? Amen. <laughs> Let us pray today. Lord, we thank you for the opportunity to come together and worship. We thank you for those who have gone before us who were faithful. Help us to maintain their faithfulness in this church body and express our faith today in worship, in spirit and in truth. In Jesus' precious name we pray.
become a Christian nation. We pray for the Russians also, Lord, that they would come and turn their eyes upon you. I pray for our missionaries around the world, Lord, that are in places of despair, that are the one shining light in those countries. Lord, we also pray, we have a lengthy prayer, excuse me, we have a lengthy prayer list. We pray for those in the prayer list and those we mention aloud now. Lord, in your mercy. Our most kind and gracious Heavenly Father, we thank you for the beautiful day you've blessed us with. We thank you for each and every one here, for those who do things that we know about, and for the folks that do things behind the scenes for this this beautiful small country church that we have with our strong faith. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Heavenly Father, we thank you for the freedom that we have to come to this house of worship without fear of persecution. We pray for those overseas in many countries that are persecuted for their faith and have to meet in secret. We just pray for this congregation. We thank you for all those who all the leaders of this congregation that you would, your Holy Spirit would touch them and just continue to be with them be with our church council especially and be with Pastor Dave as he brings us the message today and each and every week just continue to bless him and, and Tina as they, as they serve this congregation we thank you for each one here we ask that you would give us a special blessing that you would fill us with your Holy Spirit be with those who could not be here for whatever reason. Just continue to bless them. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. O oh Lord God, you led your ancient people through the wilderness and brought them to the promised land. Guide now the people of your church that following our Savior, we may walk through the wilderness of this world toward the glory of the world to come. Through your Son, Jesus Christ our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, forever. Who was with her and he ate it. 
Then the eye, then they, then they, then the eyes of both of them were opened, and they realized they were naked. So they sewed fig leaves together and made coverings for themselves. Then the man and his wife heard the sound of the Lord God as he was walking in the garden in the cool of the day, and they hid from the Lord God among the trees of the garden. But the Lord God called the man to call to the man, "Where are you?" He answered. I heard you in the garden, and I was afraid because I was naked, so I hid. And he said, Who told you you were naked? Have you eaten from the tree that I commanded you not to eat from? The man said, The woman you put here with me, she gave me fruit from the tree, and I ate it. Then the Lord God said to the woman, What is this you have done? The woman said, The serpent deceived me, and I ate it. So the Lord God said to the serpent, Because you have done this, cursed are you above all the livestock and all the wild animals. You will crawl on your belly, and you will eat dust all the days of your life. And I will put enmity, enmity uh, between you and the woman, and between your offspring and hers. He will crush your head, and he will strike his heel. To the woman he said, I will greatly increase your pains and childbearing. With pain you will give birth to children. You desire, your desire will be for your husband, and he will rule over you. To Adam he said, because you listened to your wife and ate from the tree, which I commanded you, you must not eat of it. Cursed is the ground because of you. Through painful toil you will eat of all the days of your life. It will produce thorns and thistles for you, and you will eat the plants of the field. By the sweat of your brow you will eat the food until you return to the ground. Since from it you were taken, from dust you are, and to dust you will return. Adam named his wife Eve because she would become the mother of all the living. The Lord God made garments of skin for Adam and his, husband, and his wife and clothed them. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Please read responsibly with me Psalm 32, verses 1 through 7. <laughs> Blessed is he whose transgressions are forgiven, whose sins are covered. Blessed is the man whose sins are forgiven. I kept silent, my bones wasted away through my groaning all day long. Then I acknowledged my sin to you and did not cover up my iniquity. I said, I will confess my transgressions to the Lord, and you forgave the guilt of my sin. Protect me from trouble and surround me with songs of deliverance. The word of the Lord. The second lesson is from Romans chapter 5, verses 12 through 19. Therefore, just as sin entered the world through one man and death through sin, and in this way death came to all men because all sinned, for before the law was given, sin was in the world. But sin is not taken into account when there is no law. Nevertheless, death reigned from the time of Adam to the time of Moses, even over those who did not sin by breaking a command, as did Adam, who was a pattern of the one to come. But the gift is not like the trespass. For if the many died by the trespass of one man, how much more did God's grace and the gift that came by the grace of the one man, Jesus Christ, overflow to many? Again, the gift of God is not like the result of one man's sin. The judgment followed one sin and brought condemnation, but the gift followed many trespasses and brought justification. For if, by the trespass of one man, death reigned through that one man, how much more will those who receive God's abundance, abundant provisions of grace and of the gift of righteousness reign in the life of the one man, Jesus Christ? Consequently, just as a result of one trespass was condemnation for all men, so also as a result of one act of righteousness was justification that brings life for all men. For just as through the disobedience of one man the many were made sinners, so also through the obedience of one man the many will be made righteous. The word of the Lord.
from the Gospel of Matthew, chapter 4, verses 1 through 11. Glory Glory to you, Lord. Lord. <clears throat> then Jesus was led by the Spirit into the desert to be tempted by the devil. After fasting 40 days and 40 nights, he was hungry. The tempter came to him and said, If you are the Son of God, tell these stones to become bread. Jesus answered, It is written, Man does not live by bread alone, but by every word that comes from the mouth of God. Then the devil took him to a holy city and had him stand on the highest point of the temple. If you are the Son of God, he said, throw yourself down. For it is written, he will command his angels concerning you, and they will lift you up in their hands, so that you will not strike your foot against a stone. Jesus answered him, It is also written, Do not put the Lord your God to a test. Again the devil took him to a very high mountain and showed him all the kingdoms of the world and their splendor. All this will I give you, he said, if you will bow down and worship me. Jesus said unto him, Away from me, Satan, for it is written, Worship the Lord your God and serve him only. Then the devil left him, and the angels came and attended to him. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Christ. sides on me here. Oh, no. <laughs> you believe uh, Jesus can see all sins? Yes. yes. You know, I'm not comparing myself to Jesus, but I'm, I'm pretty good at picking up sins. I can, I can watch and observe people. And if you pay attention, you can see when sin's about to happen. Or when sin has transpired. Do you believe that? Mm -hmm. I'm going to give these guys a different way to handle that. Like if if Jacob sins against you, or Nathan sins against you, a different way to respond. Like when Jesus came, he was it was amazing. If you read the Gospels, nobody else picked up on it. Like at one point he came into a synagogue. And the man had an unclean spirit. No one even noticed it. But Jesus came in, and the man cried out, What do we have to do with you, though? Jesus, son of David. <coughs> Remember that story? And he cast out the devil in a church. You believe there's sin in this church? Be honest. Yeah. What do you think Jesus would do if he'd come in here? He'd get it right. Yeah. He might not have to say anything. Right? So the next time... Nathan sins against you. What are you going to do? First thing. You're not going to get it right, so just guess. <laughs> you can, yeah. How about you? Well, if he hits me, my natural impulse is to cream him. <laughs> <laughs> Scripture says in 1 John 5, 16, if you see, if anyone sees his brother sin, sin, which is not unto death, that means not the blaspheme of the Holy Spirit. He shall ask, and he shall give him life for them that sin not unto death. How about this? Next time you see someone sin, pray that God gives them life. Even if they're a believer, pray that God blesses them. When was the last time we did that? And scripture tells us to. So the next time you see your brother sin or someone else, rather than getting irritated and mad, pray that God blesses them with life. And if they're not born again, that God gets a hold of their heart. Does that make sense? Yes. yes. You know what? It's been in the Bible all these years. And we just don't pay any attention to it. There you go, Jim. Thank you so much for your time. I didn't
didn't really want to put the guys on the spot like that, but actually, it just dawned on me this morning after reading the text. <clears throat> when was the last time you did that? Scripture tells us to. When someone sins against you, you're to pray to God that God gives them life. Oh, you, you could be upset, you could be angry, but just remember to pray for them. And then hopefully someone will pray for you when you sin. Scripture is pretty specific, and we, we get caught up in our little rituals, and we do our little things, and we ignore the text oftentimes. Today, we're talking about a couple incidences in Scripture. And first, we start off in Genesis, Genesis 3. And I believe I commented on this once before. <clears throat> Either you cover up or you come clean before God. There's only really two choices, and Adam and Eve, well, what did they try to do? Cover up. Now, they didn't have the knowledge we have today. They did. But they knew enough to know what they were doing was wrong and sinful. They knew that. And you remember, God came into the garden, and he says, Adam, Adam, where, where are you? And a lot of people think God didn't know where he was. No, he was hoping Adam would respond, I've sinned. Lord, forgive me so I can come out and, and you can clothe me. But no, that's not what he said. And he said, I was naked and I was ashamed to come out. And the Lord said to him, who told you you were naked? Who communicated that message to you? Well, who did who has he been communicating with? His wife and Satan. Then he goes to the woman, and first he talked to the man, who have you been communicating with, who have you been speaking with, and he says to the woman, what have you done? And the man, first Adam blamed the woman and who? The woman you gave me and you got. That's why I sinned. Adam blamed God and the woman. And then the woman, who does she blame? Satan. The devil made me do it, that old expression. Proverbs 28, 13 says, Whosoever tries to cover up their sins will not prosper. But whosoever confesses and forsaketh them will find mercy. Well, they were in the trees, they were hiding, they were ashamed of their sin. Where are you? Oh, I'm over here. I'm naked. I'm ashamed. The woman you gave me, God, has caused this. And then God says, the woman, what have you done? And she says, Lord, the devil made me do it. And you know, the only person that didn't blame another person was Satan. God don't talk to Satan. Think about how we are as human beings. We try to cover up. Rather than come and clean with God, oftentimes in my life, I knew he wanted me to come out from the trees, from hiding, and I just refused to come clean. And that's how sin operates. Sin works in the darkness. Sin works in your shame. Sin is an atrocious calamity that's hit the world. Romans 5 says, sin entered through Adam. And a lot of people get into debates, well, what's that mean? Well, sin passed from the father to the children. There's no one alive that doesn't have a father today. So sin passed upon all men. The only person that didn't pass on through the father was Jesus Christ, because his father was God. But sin is a very wicked deadly disease that hits mankind. And it's deceptive. Psalm 32, David wrote this, Blessed is the man whose transgression is forgiven, whose sin is covered. Blessed is the man unto whom the Lord imputes not iniquity, and whose spirit there is no vow. Happy is that man where God looks at this man and doesn't credit him with any sin. And what do we learn in the Bible? The only way we can be credited with his righteousness is 
by faith. By faith. Then we hear the story in Matthew 4 of how Jesus resisted temptation. He didn't, he could come clean at any time. He did not sin, but Satan was attacking him. How many sins can you think of? I have a couple written down here. There's the sin of pride, rebellion, and unbelief. All sin represents pride and rebellion and unbelief. There's sins of omission, <coughs> sins of commission, sins that omit, omitting is something you should do and you don't. Committing is something you shouldn't do and you do. In Genesis 3, you have both. Do you remember when they came into the garden? God said, all the trees of the garden you may truly eat, but the tree of the God, not knowledge of good and evil I shall not eat. The day you eat it, you shall die. Now, Eve added to that. She told the story, well, we're not even to touch it. God never said that. <clears throat> Scripture is very specific. So Eve was miscommunicated with the word of God. Did Adam do it? I think he did. Why? I don't know why. We hear the word of God and then we miscommunicate it to our children. You ever do that? Let's say you hear a story in scripture about the nativity. And you hear that the shepherds weren't at the, at the manger of the night. Or the, the wise men weren't there the same way as the shepherd. How do you present that to the children? Do you present it exactly how the Bible says? Or do you tell the new edition? They were all there together. God's truth. We need to stick to God's truth. <coughs> it says in verse 3 of Psalm 32, When I kept silence, my bones waxed old through my roaring all day long. For day and night thy hand was heavy upon me. My moisture is turned to the drought of summer. Then he goes on to say, I acknowledge my sin unto thee, and my iniquity have I not hid. I said, I will confess my transgressions unto the Lord, and you forgave the iniquity of my sin. Selah. For this shall everyone that is godly pray unto thee in a time when thou mayest be found. Surely in floods of great water they shall not come nigh unto thee. You are my hiding place. You shall preserve me from trouble. You shall surround me with the songs of deliverance. Selah. David had this passionate prayer. I love when he says, This shall everyone that is godly pray. So he's saying, Everyone who ever received Christ has to pray this prayer. I believe that. He has to be humble. He was under conviction. What particular time was this? Some say it was the time of Bathsheba. I think it was before. But he entered a time of of conviction. And what did he do? Did he cover up or did he come clean? He came clean. David was a man after God's own heart. And the reason I believe Scripture keeps saying that is because he was a man of repentance. The angels of God rejoice when we repent. And David was a man of repentance. But then in verse 8, God speaks. I will instruct you and teach you the way you should go. I will guide you with my eye. God's perspective. Do you crave God's perspective in your life? That's what we all need to crave. When it says, the Lord says to David, I'll guide you with my eye. And you say, let me show you how it works. Don't be wise in your own eyes. Proverbs 3, 7. Lean on my understanding. What is it? Psalm eleven four says, His eye lets his eyes behold him and test and try the children of men. When Peter was being tested, and you remember Jesus told him, you know, he prayed for him. He said, Simon, Simon. He didn't, or he didn't call him Peter. He called him Simon. Satan has desired to sift you like wheat, but I have prayed for you that your faith fail not. 
And then when they were in the garden that evening, I think it was before the judges, <clears throat> Peter denied him what? Three times. And the third time he turned and he looked and Jesus looked right at him. And Peter ran away and wept because he remembered the word of the Lord. Either come clean or you cover up. There's sin in this building today that needs to come clean. And people get a little upset when you say that, but that's the truth in any building, in most any life. But we know what we'll do, we'll keep covering it up. No one will ever know. Jesus knows. <clears throat> You can't, you can't find a, sh a shovel big enough and enough dirt to cover up a sin that Jesus won't find out. And here's the thing. He's waiting for re to restore you to repentance. He's crying out, where are you? Adam could have just come out and said, Lord, forgive me. And he would have went back to fellowship. <clears throat> Eve the same. But no. When Jesus was being tested, he didn't have to worry about covering up. He spoke the word of God because he was the word of God. And Satan tried the same tricks on him he tried on Eve and Adam. Imagine going 40 days without food. Can you imagine? And he was tested. He'd have been hungry. And Satan said, you know, you can turn those stones into bread. He said, man does not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceeds out of the mouth of God. Then he took him to a high pinnacle and said, I'm going to throw you off. And he says, you can't tempt the Lord your God. He said, won't his angels get charge over you so you won't hurt yourself? He says, don't tempt me. And then Satan asked him to bow down before him, and he says, You shall worship the Lord your God, and only him shalt thou serve. Scripture gives us example, example, example how not to sin, how when we sin we need to respond, how to pray for people who are sinning. All kinds of examples. A lot of churches today are holding services and they haven't said the word sin in months. <clears throat> Let's pray for those churches today. That they see their need for repentance. You showed me a church that doesn't speak of sin, I'll show you a building. Because it isn't God's church. <clears throat> Amen. Amen. James 1.14 says, us, other than Christ. Jesus was set up by Satan. Satan was trying to get him to fall. Well, that was impossible, but we would have. I'm pretty sure we would have failed, but not the Lord Jesus Christ. James 1.14 tells us, all of us sin when we're drawn away by our own lusts. And then that lust conceives and then sin arrives. Our thoughts become actions, and our actions become sin. Proverbs 28, 13. Whoever tries to cover up their sin will not prosper. But whosoever confesses and forsaketh them will have mercy. Lord, I want your mercy today. I want your mercy. So my challenge to everyone here today is whether it's an outward sin or a secret sin. The Bible speaks of that. One that no one else knows other than you and God. Confess it to him. He knows about it already. A, or something you may take part in in the near future. Ask God to remove that desire from you so you're not drawn away by your heart's desire. And then your thoughts become action and becomes sin. Confess them.
guess what you'll find? Mercy. I want some mercy from God, don't you? <clears throat> Let us pray. Almighty God, I thank you for your word. I thank you for Jesus. And Lord, I need mercy. And I know there's people here that need mercy as well. Lord, help us to not become accustomed to our sins and not just push them under a rug and, and ignore them. Help them, our sins in our life to become very real. And then let's expose them to the light so we can rid them in our lives. Lord, we cannot ignore the fact that we're human beings. You tell us in your word we're but dust. Help us to see our sins and respond in kind. And then worship you the way you'd have us. We pray in Jesus' name. The affirmation of faith. The Apostles Creed. I believe in God, Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the power of the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, he suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. He is in the hand of his hand. He is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again and judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the community of the saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and life everlasting. Amen. Please pray with me. Most merciful God. I confess I am not worth the same, but cannot free myself. I have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed. For I what I have done, and I what I have not done. For I have not left you to my own heart. I have not done you any hurt to myself. For the sake of your Son, have mercy on me. Forgive me, forgive me, and leave me. The Almighty God in His mercy has given His Son to die for us and for His sake forgives us all our sins. Think about that, all our sins. As a called and ordained minister of the Church of Christ and by His authority, it's by Christ's authority, I therefore declare to you the entire forgiveness of your sins in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Lord's Prayer. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever.
Pray for other sins, but before you do that, look at your own self. Let's not go off the deep end and be praying for people every time you see something wrong. It may not even be sin. Judge your own selves first. And then when you see sin, a brother or a sister sin, pray for them. Pray that God will do a work in their life. Maybe there's someone in this church you see you believe it's sin. Pray for them. And God will give you mercy. The grace of the Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the communion of the Holy Ghost be with you all. Thank <laughs> you.